I'm Sam Sheridan from Sheridan Computers. Um, so I purchased a Microtech um, 10 gig router, the four port one, which is here. I've powered it up. Um, yeah, it's passively cooled, so there's uh, absolutely no noise coming from whatsoever. Um, the box is warm. So I need to configure it, and I figured um, we might as well do that together. This is my first time that I've looked at anything microtech wise um, So let's head over and have a look at it. It's supposed to be on um, 192.168.88.1. Um, as default configuration. So let's go and see if we can get into it. So I have uh, numerous network cards in my computer. Um, the one that it's connected to is this one, this TP-Link. And so it's not automatically handing out any DHCP addresses or anything, so we're gonna need to um, configure the card. So let's go ahead and set a static IP address. H8.10 should do us. Okay, with that, let's see if we can get into it. Okay, so we're in. Um, the default username and password for this is just admin with no password. Um, hasn't actually asked me for anything yet. It's gone straight into this um, web config. Um, so as you can see, it's running root OS. Um, now this device is capable of running either root OS or switch OS, and they're completely independent operating systems. Um, the root OS obviously being a layer three operating system, and the switch OS being a layer two operating system. And any changes that you do in one won't have effect in the other, they're just not linked in any way whatsoever. So if you create VLANs or anything in root OS and you boot into switch OS, they won't be there. Um, they're just completely separate. So upon first login, we're in bridge mode. Um, so I'm guessing obviously being in bridge mode, it'll run straight out of the box if you need it to do that. Um, we've got its MAC address, we've got acquisition. So it's set to static on 192.168.88.1. Um, it's got its identity um, and the password. We've got the option for check for updates, do reset. Um, for this purpose, I'm just going to leave it as it is. I'm going to go straight into the web configuration. Welcome to webfig. Uh, so straight away, it's booted us into the uh, configuration screen and we've got our interface list. Um, as it's uh, layer three, we've got options for bridging, uh, wireless. It's obviously using a generic um, version of Router OS because this device is not wireless. Um, so some of these options are just of no use whatsoever. Um, we can set up bridging. Uh, it's got switch options. Um, there's a lot of Layer 3 options, um, we can do uh, DHCP relays, servers, DNS, um, some form of firewall. Um, it's got a lot of options, TFTP servers, um, PP, the PPP options, um, so you can set up PPOE servers, um, it's got a lot of options. Uh, MPLS, we've got routing. Um, queues. There's just a lot of options in Router OS. Uh, now, because I'm using it as a layer two switch, I want to boot it into Switch OS. Uh, so there's no point in making any changes there because they won't carry across. Um, so to get it into Switch OS, we need to go to. Uh, now these down. We need to go into System, uh, Router Board. And if we go into settings, uh, here where it says boot OS, we need to switch this across now to switch OS. 
Oh, it's WOS. Um, if we click apply and OK. Um, with no options saying anything, so let's go ahead and give it a reboot. Do you want to reboot the router? Yes. Now I'll just wait for it to reboot. Um, okay, so we've rebooted and we've gone straight into straight in. It's not asking me for any passwords or anything. Um, so let's go through the options. As you can see, the interface has changed um, completely because it's a different operating system. Um, being layer two, it's basically removed all the layer three routing options and stuff. There's just no point in being there. <coughs> um, so under links, we can enable or disable our links, set the negotiation. Um, we can see the speed and whether it's got flow control or not. Uh, SFP options. I've got no SFP modules plugged in at the moment. I'm guessing if I did, it'd tell me with the vendor and stuff. Uh, port isolation, uh, a useful option which allows us to isolate ports from being accessed by other ports. We've got all lag options. Um, I'm not very clear on how to configure that. Uh, I'm not completely familiar at all with um, MyCritic products, so, you know. There's plenty of other people out there that are much more experienced in them than I am. I'm just trying to set this up for myself. Um, port forwarding, so we can mirror ports. Um, that's a handy feature to have, and it does support that. Uh, RSTP. Um, so it does support rapid spanning tree protocol, and we can turn it on or off by port. And we can see whether it's forwarding or discarding. We've got a stats tab. Um, which is just traffic, you can see uh, bytes received and transmitted. We've got an errors tab, um, no errors showing. History. VLANs. Um, now this is the part that I wanted to look at for myself because I wasn't sure how it was set up. So the optional and it's set to receive any VLANs, so they're basically in chunk mode. Um, we can force a default VLAN to a specific port um, by obviously ticking force VLAN ID and setting the VLAN ID. Uh, I don't need to do that. Um, they say they're all set up in the trunk mode anyway. Uh, we can go into VLANs and create VLANs. Um, append, I'm guessing. Yeah. So append, uh, and then you can put a VLAN ID whether you use port isolation, uh, mirroring, etc. And which ports are members of the VLAN. Discard that for a second. Hosts, which is, yeah, it's going to show the um, host MAC addresses and which VLAN they're in. Got IGMP information, SNMP, you can set your community and if you're using um, something to monitor it, such as Zabbix or Nagios. Access lists. Um, yeah, so it's um, ACL by uh, MAC addresses. Discord dot. We've got an upgrade option. Uh, this is up to date and it's got a complete change log of the um, changes. Always good to know. So if we go into system, let's see if there's anything we need to configure in here. So address. It's set to DHCP with fallback, and its fallback address is 192.168.88.1. So if you've got a DHCP server on your network, it will pick an IP address up. If not, it defaults to this. Um, we've got the router identity, um, which is a host name. Allow from will be um, IP addresses to allow to the management IP. Um, or you can set allow from VLAN. Uh, we can see the MAC address, the serial number, the box, board name, uh, DHCP and PPOE snooping, trusted port. Um, we can see the temperature of the box. And we can set the old password and the new password. Uh, so as you can see, the Switch OS is a lot simpler than Router OS. Uh, and, you know, because it's a layer 2, the, the options um, are reduced quite a lot. That you've got to play with and it just gives you the basic functionality which is exactly what we need um, 
So looking at the box itself, it's passive for cooled. It makes no noise. There's no fans in there. Um, it's warm. It's not hot or anything. It's warm. It's passively cooled, so it does use a case as part of the heatsink. Um, one thing I have noticed about this, which is a little odd, is that the link lights are not above the SFP ports. They're on the side. Um, so, for, you know, you need to be able to uh, adjust the box round to see if the if you've actually got a link or not. Um, it's nice enough looking bit of kit. Uh, so to get a 10 gig switch for around the 100 pound mark is um, absolutely amazing to be honest. Um, you can get yourself set up with 10 gig networking fairly cheaply with this box. I'm not a fan of the interface. The interface looks very, very dated. Um, there's a lot of Microtik fans out there saying people are a lot more experienced than, with them than I am. Uh, I'm just not a fan of the interface in any way whatsoever, to be honest. Um, but I just wanted to do a quick video while I was actually going through and having a look at the Switch settings. I uh, figured might as well record it and share it with the world. If you like this video, please go ahead and um, hit the like button and also consider subscribing to the channel. Um, and hit the notification icon to get any uh, notifications of new videos that are released. I'll leave the link in the description to where you can purchase these from Amazon as uh, they are really cheap to buy. Um, the next step that I've got to do is to get it set up and see the uh, speeds that we get out of it. So, thank you for watching.